One live. Three, two, one. I'm so scared. <laughs> I just want to show you guys the screencast from last year. All right, here. Oh, I like my little pen vault. Okay, so guys, um, what we're going to do today is we are going to bring forward from what we learned in the last unit about iceboxing. And we are going to apply icebox technology, if you will, to weak acids and bases. We understand, as we wrote up on the board in black, Strong acids and bases are a slam dunk because the concentration of the hydroxide or hydronium is the concentration of the acid or base because they're strong. What if they're not? The guys, here's the thing that you're really going to find interesting today. Um, I know that you're going to get the icebox stuff fast, um, but remember the thing that made the icebox calculation process maybe a little laborious is that many times you landed in this position where you had to then use the quadratic formula. Here's the thing that's cool. Um, we are going to see today that contextualizing what we're doing with the icebox will actually allow us to avoid having to use the quadratic formula. This is pretty cool. So guys, let's sort of get the ball rolling. Let's talk about some background stuff really quickly. And I'm guessing, I, well, this will be interesting. I don't know what this is going to do. Uh, and then we'll get into the math. So guys, when we talk about weak acids and bases, what we are going to talk about is what is called an acid dissociation constant. That's, that's OK, right? Yeah. Joey, is that? It's a little low. It's a little low. Well, yeah, yeah, but you can still, even here, you, okay. What I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to rip this board off the wall and push the projector up a foot and then paint the wall. Um, but it's still, you're okay, right? Yeah, okay. So, guys, this is the idea. When we talk about weak acids, we understand that most acids are weak, all of them but the big seven. As a result, these things do not completely ionize in water. But when they ionize, what they actually do is release hydrogens, right? By definition, that's what an acid does. And so what we say is they are protonating, releasing protons. But guys, the trick is this. Strong acids release all the protons they got. Weak acids, by definition, do not release all the protons they've got, and instead what they do is reach equilibrium. Of course, the second we start thinking about equilibrium, we start thinking about Kc expressions and things like that. And that is exactly where this is headed. We are going to write Kc expressions for first weak acids and then weak bases. So guys, join me then in doing this. Consider a hypothetical weak acid, HA. OK, so guys, what I would like you to do is I would like you to write the equation, the balanced equation, the chemical equation, that represents what this acid does. But don't include the water. All right, I'm excited. I'm going to try it. I know that was a victory. This is really low, but we'll be OK. OK, so guys, we, we understand that we're talking about a hypothetical acid, and we are calling this acid, come on, oh, HA. So the thought being, as I told you, we are not going to include the water. If we do, the only difference is, is we get hydronium rather than protons. But because we're not including it, we end up with this. And then, guys, our other product is chloride. Now, what is the name that we would, oh, no, 
sorry, I'm thinking HCL. I think I can do this. So no. So guys, our um, our, our our other product is is this guy, A minus. Don't forget the minus, because guys, without the charge, it's wrong. When you remove a proton from a molecule, the thing that's left has a negative charge. And guys, what is the name that we would assign to A minus? It is the conjugate base. Yeah. That's what I wanted to talk about. So guys, connecting with what Hunter's understanding, if this were a strong acid, this would be complete. And you understand, well, let's go back to my previous question. Are you all okay with this being the conjugate base? Okay. So if HA were a strong acid, what do you know to be true of A minus? It is a worthless conjugate base. But now what we're saying is that this is a weak acid. And because this is a weak acid, it does in fact reach equilibrium. What does that then tell you about the conjugate base? It is not worthless. It does in fact have the ability to reunite with the protons that were lost, driving this in the other direction. You good with the idea? Okay, now guys do this. Write the KC expression for this reaction. Joey, can I go all the way to the bottom? Is that really okay? Okay, Alex, are you? Okay, I don't have a choice. I never realized how I accommodate for the size of the screen in terms of how I write on the board. I'm so used to having a tall screen and not a wide screen where what I'm realizing is it would have been more effective to have written this over here and then that would have given me this space to write the KC. I'll get used to it. Okay, so guys, now let's do the KC expression. Let's not do this wrong. Uh, although I'm guessing some of you did do this wrong. So we've got products on top. That would be H plus, and that would be A minus. Now, guys, do we have a denominator? Why would we not have a denominator? If this, the original acid, were a solid or a gas, right? Because solids and gases do not have, or I'm sorry, a solid or a liquid, because they don't have concentrations or, um, or, or uh, molar molarities or pressures. So guys, what's up with the HA? Where is it? Think about a bottle of vinegar. If you've got a bottle of vinegar, what have you got in a bottle of vinegar? Well, you've got CH3, COOHs, some of those break apart, and you've got hydrogens and you've got acetates. So with that as a context, what is the HA doing that isn't dissociated? It's still dissolved. Guys, understand that it is dissolved, but it is not dissociated. Does that make sense? Think about vinegar. It's not like you've got acetic acid crystals at the bottom and some of those have dissolved into the water and broken into protons and acetates. Guys, when you've got a bottle of vinegar, the molecules of acetic acid are all dissolved in the water and then some of them have dissociated. You understand the idea? So, do we include a denominator in this KC expression? Yeah, because it's dissolved, oh boy. So we also include the HA, and that is the KC expression for this, this process. Now, guys, what is this the KC expression for? What are we talking about? Weak acids. So we're not going to call this KC. We're going to call it KA. Huh? Now, guys, grab your equation sheets and find it. You got it? Third one down, right? There is our Ka expression. It is the concentration of protons times the concentration of conjugate base ions divided by the concentration of the 
dissolved and yet not dissociated acid. You good? Then let's use it. So guys, what we are going to do is we are going to use this value, this expression, in order to study what weak acids do. So, this KC expression is actually what is termed an acid dissociation constant. Which brings up an interesting question. What does the value of Ka, the acid dissociation constant? Guys, what does the numerical value of Ka tell us about the weak acid? Think about it before you say anything. And it might be helpful for us to remember, uh-oh. It might be helpful for us to remember what this value actually is a representation of in, before we get into this. So the idea then is, um, is this. So guys, if Ka, well, this is getting better. If Ka is, how fast will it let me go? Not that fast, apparently. Will it go all the way to the, ah, wait, it's not supposed to do that. That was old stuff. All right, and if it's this divided by this, Guys, the question is, what does the value of Ka tell us? If we've got a weak acid that's got a really high Ka value, what do you know about it? Which is bigger, the numerator or the denominator? The numerator. And so if it's got a big Ka value, what does that tell you? It's a pretty strong weak base, does that make, or weak acid. Does that make sense? It falls apart quite a bit. So if Ka is large, then this thing breaks apart quite a bit. If this thing is small, it doesn't break apart as much. So the larger the value of Ka, the stronger the weak acid. Now, guys, the question becomes, what is strong, what is, what is large, and what is small look like? Well, guys, typically the dividing line that we have between small and large is about 10 to the negative fourth. So if you have acids that have Ka values smaller than 10 to the negative fourth, we consider those to be pretty weak. If you've got a, a weak acid with a Ka value of like 10 to the negative second, 10 to the negative third, those are pretty strong weak acids. So that's sort of the dividing line. So, guys, bottom line is that's sort of what we learn from this is the larger the value of Ka, the, uh, the stronger the weak acid. Now, guys, here's what we're going to do with this. We are going to use the value of Ka to interconvert between Ka and pH and molarity. And, guys, the question is how does this work? So the idea is this. We are going to allow this expression to allow us to go between molarity and, and, and pH. Well, guys, where does this all fit together? And the answer is right here. Remember, pH is the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, hydronium ion concentration, however you think about it. And as a result, we can interrelate molarity, Ka, and pH because we have this connecting expression that allows us to link hydrogen to Ka and therefore to pH. And guys, that's what we're going to do today is we're going to do all these interconversions between molarity and pH. And bottom line is what it's going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to figure out the molarity of this. Just a moment. Because guys, the molar the pH of this, the pH of this is not the negative log of 0.5, because we know it doesn't completely dissociate. So we're going to be able to now figure out the pHs of weak acid solutions um, by figuring out how much of this breaks apart. So guys, that's what we're doing for the rest of the day. They are. So many times it ends up just being x squared. Yep, yep. You guys okay? So guys, let's do some math. You ready to go? Here's the way this is going to go. First, we are going to calculate Ka from pH. Guys, I do not want to turn you loose on these. I want to solve them with you. So this is an interesting question. So it says you've got a student that prepares a 0.1 molar uh, solution of formic acid. 
Formic acid, interestingly enough, is the acid that fire ants create that burn when they bite you. Um, so it's technically ant spit. But um, guys, this formic acid solution has a pH of, of 2.38. The question is this, what is the Ka of formic acid? And then, guys, we're going to talk about a new concept that we haven't talked about before. And the concept is percent protonation. And, guys, they do not give you the equation for percent protonation on the AP study guide or the equation guide, but they do expect you to be able to calculate it. It's fair because it's conceptual as much as mathematical, and you'll get it quickly. Tell me when you're done writing so we can solve this. You okay? Not yet? You okay? So guys, let me ask you a question. If you didn't know that formic acid was a weak acid, what evidence do you have in this problem that formic acid is not strong? No, no, no. What I'm saying is, if you didn't know that it wasn't one of the seven, what evidence do you have, only based in this question, that formic acid is not strong? Go ahead, Everett. That's true, but that's not what we're... Do you really not see it? Keep going, keep going. Because in strong acids, it's yeah. And what should the pH be? One. One. It's work. Do you see it? Guys, if this was a strong acid, the pH would be one. Because this is 0.1 molar. 0.1 is 10 to the negative first. The negative log of 10 to the negative first is one. If this was a strong acid, its pH would be one. Yeah? But you'll notice that it's not. It's 2.38, making it more basic than you would expect. The reason is because it's not a strong acid. That's cool you picked up on that. So guys, now what we're going to do is this. We are now going to use this information to figure out the Ka value of formic acid. I think you guys are all clear that this is our goal, right? We're trying to figure out the Ka of formic acid. Now what does that look like? So Ka is going to be equal to what? What are we really solving for? Concentration of products divided by the concentration of the reactants. Now guys, are we given any of that information? Not directly. So what are we going to have to do to figure out the equilibrium concentrations of products and reactants? Ice box. So guys, let's do this. And let me tell you right now, Remember we've been talking about this idea of including or not including water? Don't include water. When you are iceboxing weak acids, do not include water. So it's going to go like this. We're going to go H, C, H, O, 2. And then remember, guys, we write these big. Now let me offer you another piece of advice that's going to make your life a lot easier in chapter 17. Write the conjugate base first. Don't put the protons first. So guys, the question then becomes this. What is the conjugate base? To answer that, which hydrogen are you going to move? The one on the left or the one in the middle? The one on the left. The acidic proton tends to be written on one end or the other. So guys, our conjugate base will be CHO2. And then we'll include our protons. Now guys, let's turn this into an ice box. So we're going to go I... C, E. I'm finding this board causes me to write much more methodically. 
So now, guys, let's keep the end in mind. In order to answer the question, what do we need to know? We need to know this and this and this because those are the values that we'll plug into Ka to solve for Ka. So what do we do to get there? Well, guys, what do we know right up front? Anything? Is there any data in this question that we could put in the grid? Go ahead, Hunter. OK, so where does 0 0.10 molar fit? That is the initial concentration of the acid. Yes. This is a 0, and this is a 0. Now, guys, do we know anything else? Hold on, let people think about it. Do we have any other data that we can plug into this table? Do I think you're starting to see it, right? All right, Hunter got there first. Go ahead. What does the pH tell us? The hydrogen ion concentration when? At equilibrium. So guys, the idea is the pH is, is the measurement of hydrogen ion once this has reached equilibrium. Now guys, what that then requires, and I'm going to do this somewhat sloppily, um, but what that requires then is a calculation. This does not like to write over here. It requires a calculation where we go 2.38 oops is equal to the negative log of x or x is equal to oops and guys again I'm going to take horrible liberties with um, with significant digits do you get 0.00417 molar did it is that do we have consensus on that? OK, so this is 0 0.004 molar. I just ran it the other way to make sure. OK, so guys, do you see how the uh, dominoes are about to fall? Because what we've got here is we now know, I'm used to having something to hold on to. We now know. This does not like to draw dots. We now know this. But guys, we now know everything. Do you see it? If this started at zero and went to this, what is our change? Plus 0 0.004. We need to figure out how to make this draw dots, because this is not cool. Guys, I think what I may have to do for dots right now is draw small x's. Um, OK, now, what else do we know? If that went up by 0 0.004, so did the conjugate base. So this also went up by 0 0.004. So now we can infer the concentration of our conjugate base ion, and that would be 0 0.0004. Now, guys, if this went up by 0 0.004, this went down by 0 0.004. And we can do that math, because we can go 0.1 minus 0 0.004, and we get 0 0.096. Now, guys, we can do our Ka value. And it goes like this. So you know, you do never, you do never, you never need to write out H plus A minus over HA. You don't need to write out the general form. What you do need to write is this, CHO2 minus H plus. And 
unprotonated HCHO2. Now, guys, we plug in our values. This, and here, Carson, is your squared thought, right? We can just do this. Point zero zero four squared divided by point zero nine six. Yes, um, you should. Okay. Here, let me do that for you. And guys, I get, and I'm going to write this out as a decimal. Um, I know that we could do it as, as scientific notation. No, I'm going to do it as scientific notation. That'll be just fine. So I get 1.7. Seven, <laughs> come on, baby, times 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, times 10 to the negative fourth. Those little x's bug me. So guys, what does this tell us? Well, remember the conversation that we had previously? What does it mean if something's big or small? And where did we say the line was? Around 10 to the negative fourth. So guys, what do we now know about formic acid? It's a pretty strong weak acid. That's why it hurts so bad when ants bite you. It's the acid in their saliva that is actually corrosive to your flesh. And this is a fairly strong weak acid. Now, guys, with that said, let's now answer the second part of the question. It says, what percentage of the acid is protonated? Now, guys, in order to answer that, there are two numbers that you need to keep in mind. This one and this one. Okay? So the original concentration of the acid and the concentration of protons. And guys, that second calculation goes like this. And again, this is not on the AP equation sheet, but you need to know it. It goes percent protonation is equal to huh, concentration of protons divided by concentration of how does that go? C H O 2. Now, guys, here's the deal. This is not the concentration of the initial acid at equilibrium. It is the concentration of the acid initially. So help me with the numerator. Is that 0 0.004? Okay. So this is 0 0.004 molar, the initial acid was 0.1, right? 0 0.10 molar. And then, guys, we're going to multiply that by 100 to turn that into a percentage. So we have 0 0.004 divided by 0 0.1 times 100. And guys, that gives me 4%. That's the point. And Nate, I was hoping somebody would say that. Didn't we say this was relatively strong? We did. So what are you finding surprising? Yeah, see, Nate understands what this number means. Guys, what this number means is if you have a solution of formic acid, 96% of it is this. And only 4% of it has broken apart. And that is a strong weak acid. 
it kind of puts in context what it means to be a strong weak acid. Because this is pretty strong. You certainly wouldn't want to get it on you. And it's 96% not broken apart. It's only, as we said, 4% ionized. So guys, you've got to understand the context of what we're dealing with. Things that are strong, weak acids are still relatively unprotonated. You get the idea? Go ahead. Yeah. Is four percent of this exists as protons? Yeah. Right. So ninety-six of it is percent of it is this. Just a minute, Spencer. Right, and so four percent of it's this. No, no, no. So, yeah, no, it's uh, the math doesn't work that way. Um, your percentages and amounts are not the same. So the idea is that if, if you had, if you, we talk in moles, right? But imagine if you could talk in particles. If you put 100 of these in water, 96 of them would remain intact, four of them would split apart, and you would end up with four of these and four of those. The place where you could connect to what you're thinking, Everett, is imagine that those were molarities. The molarity in particles would be twice the molarity of the individual things. So, does that make sense? Okay. You guys okay with the ideas? Yeah. Well, yeah, because what does a strong acid do? By definition, it's 100% protonated. So that's an interesting way to think about it is that this is... 125th as strong as a strong acid. Yeah, great observation. You guys good? Okay, go ahead. Exactly. Well, but understand, I mean, if you're using this as a weapon, and I mean, it's sort of the general principle in weapons, we could have a lot better weapons, but then they kill our team too. Right? So you, 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 by definition, a weapon needs to be controllable enough that it only hurts the other guy. And so if, if ants contain strong acids, they would die too. Um, so it needs to be weak enough that an ant can carry it around in its saliva glands, and yet strong enough that it kind of convinces the other guy to go away and not hurt the ant. So, yeah. You guys good? All right, now guys, this is where I, I really think you're going to enjoy, if you will, the logic of what we're about to do. Guys, we are about to go in the other direction. This is a seemingly harmless little question. What is the pH of 0.3 molar vinegar? As Zach pointed out very astutely, it's not the negative log of 0.3 because it's not strong. So guys, you're going to like this. This is, this is good logic. Notice that they gave us the Ka of acetic acid. It's 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. You will never be asked to memorize those. But this one you will memorize because by the end of chapter 17, you're going to be so sick of talking about vinegar and ammonia that you're going to want to dig your eyes out. But, so guys, the question then, as we're realizing, is what is the pH of this acetic acid solution? Now, in order to figure out pH, what are we actually going to solve for? Concentration of hydrogen, and then we'll convert that to a pH, which makes us realize we need an ice box. So, first thing we need to do is generate an ice box, and again, guys, conjugate base first when you write it. So we've got CH3COOH in I think I know why it's doing that. I just can't fix it right. Oh, whoa. 
hold on. Wow, that was weird. Okay, let's try this again. Um, so we've got... <laughs> we'll get there. Um, you can let me write now. So we've got C... Oh boy. Um, you know what, guys? Let's just stop fighting this battle and let's quit out everything and start over. Okay, so... Glad that didn't happen mid-problem. That would have been really frustrating. Okay, so we've got that, and we've got this, and we've got this, and we've got this, and now it's letting me draw. Okay, take two. So, oh, ah, I need the question. Good heavens. We used to have this relatively streamlined. Okay, so we've got CH3CO. I wonder if I should disable this. Th I think what the problem is, is this has got a button in it. And when I push too hard, it thinks I'm clicking. Okay, let's see if it'll let me write. CH3COOH in equilibrium with CH3. I'm just going to have to go slow, I guess. Uh, Okay, and guys, if this continues to happen, I'm just going to do this on the board. So, all right, so now what we need to do is we need to convert this into an ice box. So guys, we're going to come down the side and we're going to go I, C, E, and there's our ice box. And then guys, we're going to flesh out this ice box with all the information that we're given. What are we given? Hardly anything, right? We are given this. Oh, it let me draw a dot, though. So, guys, we've got 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3 molar that, and that is all that we are given. So what are we going to do? Well, we can infer two things, right? We know that this is 0, and we know that this is 0, because those have no initial concentrations. So now, guys, let's make sure we all understand what we're trying to figure out. We want to know the pH. So to get the pH, what part of this ice box do we really need? Bottom right, right? So what we're going to do is this. We are going to call that x. Now the pieces start to fall together. Because if this is x, then this If that's x, then this is plus x. And if that's plus x, then this is plus x. And if that's plus x, then this is x. Good? Now, guys, if those are plus x's, what do we got over here? Minus x. So this is minus x. So this, and guys, just give me some grace here is 0.3 minus x getting rid of that significant digit because it's not the point. Okay, so now guys what we're ready to do is we're ready to write our KC expression. You're gonna like this. You ready? So we are going to go, what do I need to do? K A is equal to acetate Come on, baby. And down here, we've got acetic acid. Now, what do we know? We know Ka. Ka is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth um, okay, we're just going to keep going with this. And guys, do we know anything on the right? Well, we actually know a lot, don't we? We know that our numerator is x and x. So what is that? 
x squared. Carson, your x squared. And then, guys, what is our denominator? 0.3, and again, forgive my leaving off the 0, minus x. So now, guys, we've got to solve this for x, right? Because x gives us this, which we then take the negative log of, and that gives us hydrogen ion concentration. Not now. So, guys, if we can solve for x, we can then come up with the hydrogen ion concentration, which we can then give as pH, right? Now, I know that you're looking at this, or I think you should be looking at this and start thinking about how do I solve this? And what is going to be required to solve this? Quadratic formula. But guys, watch. We can actually do something contextually that gets rid of the quadratic formula. Now here's the problem. At this point, I would really like to go back to the screen where the formic acid stuff was to show you. But I'm thinking that it's gone. It is gone. So guys, you are going to have to reference that formic acid calculation, but I can't do that with you because mine is gone. But here's the idea. Guys, first join me at the board. Let's talk about what we are actually looking at here. So guys, what do these x's represent? the concentration of hydrogen and, and acetate, right? Protons and acetate. Now, where did the protons and acetate come from? From the acetic acid. So guys, I know this is obvious, but you've got to connect with this idea. These amounts right here are also representative of the extent to which this fell apart. Does that make sense? 0.3 minus x. So these are representative of this, and this tells us how much of this fell apart. Good? Okay. Now, guys, go back mentally to Nate's interesting observation. What was the percent ionization of formic acid? 4%. And Nate found that surprising because we said that formic acid is a relatively strong acid and only 4% of it fell apart. So guys, if my memory serves, what did 4% look like? Did it start at 0.1 molar? Think about this. It started at 0.1 molar and what molarity of that fell apart? 0.004. Guys, 0 0.004 compared to 0 0.1 is a rounding error. Do you see what I'm saying? 0 0.004 is such a small amount of acid that actually broke apart that if we were tracking significant digits, we wouldn't have even known that it happened because our original concentration was 0 0.10 and 0 0.004 is beyond the bounds of the significant digits that we're even keeping track of. And guys, that was for a weak acid that was relatively strong. So now think about this. Look at the Ka of vinegar. What is it? 10 to the negative fifth. It's even smaller by a power of 10. It is even smaller than the Ka of formic acid. So what do you now know about the amount of vinegar that's going to fall apart? It's even less. And guys, here's the deal. The amount of vinegar that is going to fall apart is so small that we can pretend like it isn't even happening, and this won't let me write. We're going to get rid of the minus x. Don't do that in your notes yet. But guys, we can get rid of the minus x, but you'd better understand why. Guys, what is it that allows us to just get rid of that minus x? Because what does x represent? The amount of acid that breaks apart, how much is going to break apart? Not very much. How do we know? 
because the Ka is bitty. I'm not going to do questions yet. So guys, do you understand the logic? It goes like this. We can get rid of minus x. What allows us to get rid of minus x? Minus x is really small. How do we know minus x is really small? Because it represents the amount of acid that breaks apart, and not very much acid is going to break apart. How do we know not very much acid is going to break apart? Because Ka is itty bitty, right? So guys, this is the way that you're going to write it. And please do this in your notes with me right now. Guys, the way that you're going to write this is you are going to do this. You are going to say approximately equal to. And this is approximately equal to this. And this we can solve for x very, very rapidly. So guys, we're going to take 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. We're going to multiply that by 0.3. And we're going to take the square root of that. And the answer, um, which I think I will write out, is 0.0023. And this is a molarity. But now, guys, we're not done with the problem, are we? What do we need to figure out? We're going for pH. So pH is equal to the negative log of hydronium ion is equal to the negative Oh, crap, I did it again. Oh, shoot. I just got rid of all my notes. We're OK. You're just going to have to remember on your own. Um, is, so let me just start from here. Is, so is equal to the negative log. Can you give me the number? Hold on, it's not even. 0 0.00232. And guys, somebody do the math for me. 2.63. And that would be the pH of this solution. So guys, unfortunately, now I don't have anything to reference back to, which I think is going to prove to be inconvenient. But that's how to solve the problem. The thought, the interesting thing that we leveraged was the idea that with these weak acids, they dissociate so insignificantly that the change in concentration to the original acid is functionally a rounding error. And because it's a rounding error, we can, dis we can pretend it didn't happen, do that approximately equal to step, and then it makes the math a whole lot easier. Do you get the idea? So Eliza, I want to answer your question because I think I know what it is. What's that? Why do you need the x squared if you can't Okay. So let me, again, I wish I had this to write down, but let, let me get to where we were, OK? So we had 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth was approximately equal to x, x squared divided by, and then we had the point. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I'm going to leave the approximately equal to, but I'm going to do that for now so we can talk. Okay. So the question that I think you're understanding is, why did we get, or that I think you're asking is, why did we get rid of this and not that? Right? OK. And so the idea is this. It's contextual. Okay. So this represents the amount of, of the acid that broke apart. right? And relative to 0.3 molar, it's functionally not even important. But it really is important because it's the amount of hydrogen ion that leads to this pH. So relative to the initial concentration of 0.3 molar, eh, it may as well not have happened. 
But when we think about how it impacts pH, it is really important because it leads to a pH of 2.63. So relative to this, no big deal, but in the bigger scheme of things, it is important because it's what determines the pH. Therefore, we can't get rid of it. Yeah. And guys, isn't that the question? When can we do this and when can we not do this? And guys, I think you're attuned to this enough that you're not going to like the answer and that's good. You ready? Guys, let's do this really quickly. Let's calculate the percent ionization for this solution of acetic acid. And guys, I'm just going to do this back of napkin. Um, so the percent ionization, I'm not even going to write down the equation would be 0 0.002, come on baby, see this is that bow in the board, 2, 3, 2, divided by our initial concentration, which is 0.3. So guys, I get 0.77%. So if you have a 0.3 molar solution of vinegar, it is less than 1% ionized. It's not very much, is it? So if you are only 0.7% ionized, it is clearly safe to disregard the minus x. But as I knew you would get there, the question becomes, as Jason asked, when is it OK and when is it not OK to do the minus x, get rid of the minus x. And guys, sadly, the answer is this. If an acid is less than 5% ionized, it's OK mathematically to disregard the concentration change caused by protonation. See the problem? You got to do it to figure out whether or not you needed to do it. So guys, technically what this means is the only way to figure out percent ionization is to set up the ice box, solve for x using the quadratic formula, figure out what x is, the concentration of protons, divide that by the initial concentration of the acid, and if that's less than 5%, then you get to say to yourself, gosh, I didn't really need to use the quadratic formula. but we can get around it. Because guys, what we're seeing is a correlation between Ka and percent ionization. Guys, what was the Ka for formic acid on the order of what power? 10 to the negative fourth, and what was the percent ionization? 4%, that's a coincidence. The exponent is not the percentage, but something on the order of 10 to the negative fourth for a Ka was approaching this boundary. Now guys, what was the Ka for acetic acid? 10 to the negative fifth. What was its percent ionization? Less than one. That's, that's safe. So guys, if we are approaching 5% as our boundary for being able to disregard x, where is that going to fall in terms of Ka? around a Ka of 10 to the negative fourth, okay? So guys, this is the general rule. If your Ka is smaller than 10 to the negative fourth, so 10 to the negative fifth or smaller, you're safe. If the Ka is 10 to the negative third or greater, you're never okay. And then if you're in that gray area, of 10 to the negative fourth, it's always best to use the quadratic formula. But guys, the bottom line is this. They won't put you in that position on a, um, they won't put you in that, oh gosh, it's not there. Why is it not there? That's weird. It went away, and now I can't even move up. We got a lot to learn. That is so weird. I can't even control my board anymore. <laughs> we'll learn. 
Yeah. It, oh, now it works. Interesting. So guys, the bottom line is this, and for some reason it's not in my notes, so just get it down. The boundary is 10 to the negative is 10 to the negative fourth. If you're smaller than that, you're safe. If you're bigger than that, you can never do it. If you're in that range, it's always best to use a quadratic formula. You okay? Oh, good. We got enough time. So guys, now that we're done with weak acids, let's talk weak bases. And it goes like this. Guys, when we talk about weak bases, When we talk about weak bases, guys, weak bases can only be understood in the context of water. Because weak bases function as bases by actually stealing protons from water and forming hydroxide. So guys, that's how this definition is different from a weak acid. Weak acids bring their own protons. Weak bases do not bring their own, their own hydroxides. They form it by breaking down water. So guys, the bottom line is you can only understand weak bases in the context of water. So guys, write the chemical equation for this. And we are going to, let me just give it to you. We are going to call our base B. So it goes like this. If our base is B, write the expression that represents how B functions as a base in water. So guys, how's this going to go? Well, B is going to grab a hold of some water. Now guys, when B grabs a hold of water, what's it going to do? If it's a base, what does it do? It's going to steal a hydrogen. And so guys, when it steals a hydrogen, you are going to end up with HB+. And when that happens, your other product then will be O. H minus. Now, guys, when you write the KC expression for this, which one of these will not be included in the KC expression? The water, because that's a pure liquid and it doesn't have a concentration. So this, this will be gone. So now, guys, look at your equation sheet and find it. Got it? KB is OH minus times HB plus all divided by B. You good? Okay. But guys, here's then the trick. When you solve problems like the ones that we just solved, only for weak bases, your ice box looks a little bit different. So let's solve this question. What is, what is the pH of a 0.15 molar solution of NH3? All you got to remember, guys, guys is 0.15 molar NH3. And we are we solving, solving the pH. 0.15 molar NH3. And we are we solving all the pH. pH. So what does so this, this look, look like? like? Well, guys, we need a nice box. Nice box. So we're going to so go and a H three and, and water. water. And now we, and now need, we products. need products. What are, what our, are products our products going to be? be? NH four plus. plus. NOH. Now guys, as we set this up. To be an ice box, what are we solving for? Well, we're solving for pH, right? I know the question's gone, but I was hoping you'd remember. We're solving for pH, but pH is not contained anywhere in this problem. We're going to solve for OH, 
and then through all of those related seesaw equations we can change that into a pH. So now guys what do we know? Remember the molarity? 0.15 molar? Where does the 0.15 molar go? The initial concentration of the NH3. Now guys what can we infer? This is zero and this is zero. Now guys check this out. That has no concentration and that is not the same as zero concentration. It has no concentration. And guys, you'll notice I'm ignoring your questions. If you have questions, I'd love to talk with you during Pride. We're going to get through this. So, guys, that has zero concentration. So how do we then solve it? Well, guys, it's the same game. We want to know x. So what do we now know? Well, if this is x, this went up by x, this went up by x, so this is x. And if that went up by x, this went down by x, so now we have 0.15 minus x. And then, guys, you can probably picture how this would go. What do we need to know in order to solve this problem? We need to know Kb. Um, I actually think it's the same as the Ka for... Let me look it up really quick. I think it's the same as the Ka for, um, oh, for acetic acid. Weak bases, ammonia. Hey, it is. So guys, the K, and we would write out the expression Kb is equal to ammonium hydroxide divided by NH3. But then we would get to this point and we would go one point. You're going to do it again, aren't you? 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth is equal to x squared divided by point, point 0.15 minus x. And now, guys, can we disregard the minus x? Yeah, because this is on the order of 10 to the negative fifth. We can disregard the minus x and go on from there. You get the idea? Okay. So guys, this now brings up an interesting point, and this is how we're going to wrap up the day. Um, we need to talk about a new idea. We understand that acids have Ka's. We understand that bases have Kb's. But you ready for an interesting connection? What is this number? Come on, just let me circle that. I know what I'm doing this weekend. If you need to find me on Saturday, I'll be here ripping down this board and painting that wall. So, so guys, what does that number tell you right there? What is it? No, 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 I don't mean what does it mean. I mean, what is that number? The Kb of NH3. So, guys, this is the Kb of NH3. It tells you how strong NH3 is. Now, guys, you ready for an interesting thought? Check out NH4. Guys, what is the answer, or I'm sorry, what is the name that we give to NH4? Conjugate acid. Now, guys, guess what? If we know the Kb for NH3, we can calculate the Ka for NH4. And, guys, the relationship goes like this. Ka times Kb, you want to guess what it's equal to? Kw. Which again is 1.0 1, 1 times 10 to the negative fourth. So guys, the bottom line is, is if we know the Ka of a weak base, we can figure out the Ka of its conjugate acid by plugging this in here. But here's the mistake you're going to make. You're going to say, if I know the Kb of NH3, I can then also figure out the Ka of NH3 by putting it in here. And that's not what this allows you to do. What this is saying is if you know the Kb of this, you can figure out the Ka of its conjugate. 
it's not the Ka and Kb for the same species, it's the Kb of the base and the Ka of its conjugate acid. Go ahead. Absolutely, and that's actually what this is all about. Um, if we go here, you can actually do that. Like, for example, here's acetic acid. The Ka for acetic acid was 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. The Kb for acetate ion, you could solve by plugging it in here. Okay. So it's acid to base or base to acid. Yep. Well, guys, that was not bad. Given the complexity of what I was trying to teach you and the fact that I've never touched this board before, I'm going to count that a victory. I'm really hoping that when I rip down this worthless board and drive to whoever installed it and give it back to them, um, we can get this even better dialed in. But in the meantime, here's your homework. Guys, we will grade this on Tuesday. And on Tuesday, I think, I don't remember, I think what we're doing is talking about the acid-base properties of salt solutions. I also know that I have a test that I need to get back to you so we can rewrite it. Um, hopefully we'll have everybody having taken it soon and we will uh, get on that. Um, but guys, believe me, I know it's, it's hanging over my head too. Um, but guys, this is how we will end our week. Um, and actually, guys, and please don't, please. I'm going to let you all go for pride. Because um, I got I, I need to get this to work better. And I've got half an hour to do it. I'm going to allow you to go. I am going to wait. I'm going to ask that you wait long enough that I can print our pride report so I can respect eyes from other teachers. But guys, do not do this. Do not go and bother other teachers during Pride, and when they ask you, why are you here, they say, oh, Knappenberger, just let everybody go. Don't hang me out to dry like that. <laughs>